Welcome to Suncoast Spotlight. You're watching a television program brought to you by the Sarasota County Film and Entertainment Office in partnership with the Suncoast Technical College. And I'm Jeannie Corcoran, your Sarasota County Film Commissioner. And today we're going to meet with some young women filmmakers who have a new initiative, a new collaborative with other filmmakers called Forward Indie Films. So with me today we have Millie King. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and we have Zifeng Zhou. I'm going to call you Z from now on because that's what everyone calls you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so welcome, Millie. Welcome, Z. And I'm I'm really excited to hear that the two of you have taken the initiative to start your own film collaborative to help younger filmmakers find their way. And let me start with you, Millie. How did this idea come to pass? Well, actually, um, my good friend Lisa Silvermore and I uh, co-founded this at the very start um, a few months ago. We were just getting coffee together and talking about filmmaking and we, you know, we're kind of pooling our resources and we were like, you know, we could really get some people together and make this more of um, a resource for the community. Um, we can actually get some things done if we make this into more of a, a collective um, and so that's what we did. We started mm -hmm. Uh, she invited Z, and I had worked with Z before on some student sets. So um, that's just three of us are, you know, part of the half dozen that are now making up uh, the group. So you're um, growing exponentially. You went from mm -hmm. two to three to six. So is twelve next? Is that how this works? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. that's great. And tell me a little bit about your background, and then we'll get on Z and, and have her share the same exact thing. Um, well, I actually attended um, the digital video production, as it was called when I went there. When now I was it's digital video technology program. Yes. Right. Um, I attended when I was uh, 16 to 18, and Mr. Gray was my instructor, and he really helped me stay focused on being a part of the film community. Um, and so when I graduated, I started working with Arensis Films and some other uh, local people in the area on some different projects I've worked on three features now and um, some one of them your capacity. own capacity one of them I, I did right. produce um, like was the producer on um, recent uh, well a year ago now a year and a half ago um, when I was 19 I was just about to turn 20 and then um, now I'm trying to get back into being involved with the students more because it's what I like to do, and uh, we're, I'm presented again with an opportunity in my life to do that. So that's a, that's a great motivation, and sharing the knowledge, sharing the wealth, and there's strength in numbers. Definitely. So the more you grow, the, the better it is for all of you. That's something I've learned, <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. what we're trying to extend a bit. That's great. And Z, tell me a little bit about your background, how you got started. Yeah. I know your situation's a little different. You're still in school. Right? Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. a, a Currently a junior film student at Ringling College of Art and Design, and originally um, I'm from Delaware, the little state of Delaware, and I started kind of getting into the filmmaking uh, world when I was in high school. I had a technical high school, so I learned the basics there, and then eventually when I got to college, I decided to go to Ringling, mm -hmm. and from there on, just been part of the film program there. It's definitely helped me out a lot, and I got a chance to work um, on big professional sets such as the Kevin Smith project that was here over the summer right. um, and also worked with Justin Long on his little mm -hmm. short film as well. Right. It's great that they bring the digital filmmaking lab mm -hmm. initiative over at Ringling College brings in a lot of the real deal. They mm -hmm. bring in actors and performers who are also their own writers, their own producers and things like that. Yeah and like Millie, um, I've, I, th I feel like I've come to a point where I have a lot of knowledge that I can pass it on to the younger generation of filmmakers and being a part of this group is, you know, a step towards what I want to do in that terms. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know, because mm -hmm. you can't know this behind the scenes, mm -hmm. um, Z was doing a little uh, impromptu documentary filming uh, footage around <laughs> the green screen uh, with her cell phone mm -hmm. before we were on camera. It was just the way it is today. <laughs> you can make footage anywhere, anytime, mm -hmm. with anything just about. And it looks great. It's amazing the tools and the technology now that democratizes the ability to shoot. Which is kind of like another point um, that we're hoping to get across to people that are even just a couple years younger than us is, you know, needing to uh, take advantage of the, the resources we have now and how young you can be to make films um, and how you don't have to necessarily wait until you're done with your education or you have an angel investor <laughs> or anything like that, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Right. You're not as hamstrung by all the technical needs that used to exist. Right. That you don't can exist shoot anymore. something on an iPhone. Yeah, you could, right. you know, if you're 20 and you have an iPhone and you have a story, you can make a movie. Right. They even have iPhone film festivals now. Mm -hmm. I see it online all the time where you can submit anything from 15 seconds, I think, up to two minutes. And yeah. It's pretty interesting. I think we're going to have to go to a quick break. I'm really interested in all the things you're talking about here, so I hope you at home are too. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Cutting Edge Salon, located on the campus of Suncoast Technical College, is open to the public for styling services, coloring services, chemical texturing, nail coloring, manicures and pedicures, hair removal services, facials, and more. All of the beauty services are performed by the students of the Suncoast Technical College's cosmetology program under the supervision of its award-winning instructors. The Cutting Edge Salon is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m., and on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays, evening appointments are also available from 4 until 9 p.m. For appointments, call 941-924-1365, extension 62343. The Cutting Edge Salon, located on the campus of Suncoast Technical College, is a cut above. Welcome back to Suncoast Spotlight. We're talking to some young women filmmakers who are sharing the wealth. They're bringing in other young filmmakers, they're teaching them what they know, they're making new content with new technology, and it's a great thing. Now, what sort of content are you going to specialize in, or are you just going to do a little bit of everything? Oh, let's start with you, Millie. Well, um, obviously, film and local indie filmmaking is uh, something we have the most experience in, um, but we're, we try to keep an open mind with everything we're approaching. Um, you know, we just were looking to give more uh, technical skills and resources mm -hmm. to other students um, and, you know, learn ourselves. You know, it's something we kind of want to figure out, I think, as we go along, because it's still such a young and growing process for us. Right. And Z, I know over at the Ringling College uh, digital track, mm -hmm. they basically have you work on short films. Yeah. And short films are sort of their their piece de resistance to yeah. make that art form. Yeah, mostly like narrative short films we focus on are um, from freshman up to senior year. And once we get to senior year, we kind of diverse out into uh, branded stuff. So like commercials, music videos, mm -hmm. PSAs, things like that. So it kind of gives us an opportunity to see how those types of films are different, but at the same time structured similarly to a narrative short film. Right. Yeah. And have you ever thought about, either one of you, have you ever thought about the documentary world? Because there's so many interesting subjects and topics, especially we've just recently had the Sarasota Film Festival wrap up its 20-year anniversary. And the documentaries were phenomenal, mm -hmm. as were many of the short films and the narrative films and, and a lot of other content. But I was impressed by the diversity of the documentary films. Mm -hmm. Have you, either of you, given any thought to that? I definitely have. It's um, one of those things that I've considered as a part of my thesis. Uh, I'm not thinking about doing a narrative in my part as a director, but I am interested in directing either a documentary or commercial. Mm -hmm. So um, getting that option, seeing what <clears throat> a lot of people have done now with documentaries, it's definitely inspired me to at least try it out. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a fascinating field. And what about web series? Let's talk a little <laughs> bit about that because that, talk about democratization of distribution. Everybody has access. Mm -hmm. Everybody can do this. It's funny that you say that because I think it's kind of um, in this current period of time maybe more efficient or effective to do a documentary web series um, because things change so quickly and things move so quickly and even just an, a, an event or, or, you know, a particular historical occurrence that you're trying to cover could be changing so rapidly. The story of mm -hmm. what you're trying to cover could be changing so rapidly that maybe you can only do it in small sections right now mm -hmm. or you wait until it's all over, <laughs> you know. But, um, yeah, with the, the pace of things um, going the way they're going, you know, that may be the best way to catch people's attention with hard-hitting or heavy material. Sure. And I think about the days of uplinks when uh, mm -hmm. when I was doing a lot of production out west. If you didn't have an uplink truck, you were you were hard-pressed to get what you were creating, if there was something that was breaking news, to get it up and on the air. Mm -hmm. 
and we would go all over with an uplink truck and we would be ready to hook up around the country mm -hmm. just to go live. But now you can do it on the internet. You can do it with your cell phone. Mm -hmm. You can go live on Facebook or even things like Twitter, Instagram. Anyone can be a journalist, yeah. um, but not everyone applies the rules of journalism. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, But we, we definitely embrace the technological world and definitely using it for mm -hmm. our advantage. And at least for me, I believe that's at least f and for this generation of filmmakers is a great thing, a great tool to do. Uh, I've heard stories where somebody would just upload their short films to YouTube and, mm -hmm. you know, at one night during the day, uh, a big name filmmaker would just see it on YouTube and it's like, I want to like talk to this person right. and try to, you know, get in contact with them, see if we can develop something even more. So I think it's just a great connection tool. It is a great connection. I, I do a lot of trade shows and I do a lot of conferences with television and producers and TV and new media as well as film. And one of the things that I've heard a lot at reality television conferences, which also includes partially scripted and documentary, it's not just, you know, Baby Boo Boo or, or some of the goofy shows, it's also a lot of real life, realism, semi-documentary based, partially scripted stuff. And one of them, one of the panels I heard said the magic number on YouTube to get Hollywood to call you or to get a producer to call you is a million hits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get a million hits and suddenly the networks or the cable outlets or the producers or the production companies, you've got their attention and they go, you've already got a built-in audience of a million fans, let's talk. <laughs> so yeah. do you have a hope for any of that? Um, I hope uh, that with us being generous in sharing what we're doing and how we're doing it, with people who follow us on social media, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, um, that they will, you know, if they're filmmakers, will respond in kind, you know, will support us, will continue to follow us, will continue to share us, will continue to get us views, will, you know, spread the word, help mm -hmm. us stay doing what we're doing because we'd like to do that. Right. Yeah. All right, let's wrap up with how do they get a hold of you? What's the easiest way for people who want to get involved with Forward Indie Films? Um, currently, we have an email um, that people can get a hold of us at. It's forwardindiefilms at gmail.com. Is that I-N-D-I-E? Yes. Forwardindiefilms at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And what about Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? Yeah. We, we are in the process of getting all of those things up. And by the time this airs, I'm sure it will be. So uh, it will be Forward Indie Films. That's something you can Google and you'll be able to find our Facebook um, mm -hmm. page, but the email is how you get direct um, contact with us. Excellent. Millie, Z, thank you both very much. I really appreciate you being here, and I think what you're doing is great. Keep up the great work. And to everyone watching, this is the end of our first segment. Stay with us. There'll be more. But support these young women filmmakers. Support this collaborative that they're trying to create and help others. They're paying it forward. So give them the support by you paying it forward to them. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back. A new housing boom is predicted in our area. That means new jobs for qualified plumbers. Our plumbing program can prepare you to take advantage of those opportunities. You'll learn commercial, residential plumbing, insulation, maintenance, and servicing. Become familiar with the latest solar technologies. And in as little as a year, you can be working as a plumber's assistant, preparing yourself to become a certified, licensed plumber. Welcome back to Suncoast Spotlight. We continue to bring you exciting people in the world of film and entertainment and things going on around Sarasota from indie film to film festivals. And with us right now, we have three awesome people from the Sarasota Film Festival from the 2018 20th anniversary version of the film festival. And it's just exciting to have you. We have Aaron Murphy, and you're the Associate Festival Director. Yes, we're very excited and to be here. And we have Paul Ratner, and you are the Director of Education. Yes. And we have your beautiful wife, Petra Ratner, and you are the Manager of Marketing and promotions and press and publicity, right? Well, anyway, it's wonderful to have you here. And I know we don't have a lot of time because this is such a busy week for you. But I'd like to talk to all three of you about the educational component because people know you're doing great films. They know you're showing great documentaries. There's great parties. A lot of wonderful stuff going on every year and especially this year. But let's talk about the educational side of it, uh, the 20-hour film festival, the youth fest. Let's start with... Let's start with Paul. We'll start with the man in the middle. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> Paul, tell me how your, your program was put together this year and what makes you happiest about it. 
Uh, well, thank you for having us here, first of all. You're um, welcome. Yeah, we have a lot of great educational you know, events going on this year. W one of them, uh, you know, we just had this morning. In fact, I'm, you know, just here from that event. We have a VIP kid trip. So we have about 1,500 uh, local students coming to wow. see films at the Sarasota Film Festivals. 1,500? 1,500, 1500 that's How right. How many schools does that represent, do you know? Uh, it's t over a dozen, I think. It's just a number of schools, you know, from different ages, elementary and middle and high, you know, and we have a great program for them. We're showing uh, short films and as well as a great documentary called Tuba to Cuba, which everyone should check out. Yes. That's for high schoolers. Um, you know, we have other events that are very nice. Um, uh, we just wrapped up recently Hollywood Nights, which is a young filmmaker showcase. And what a um, great opportunity for them to really walk a red carpet and be respected as filmmakers. Right. You know, it's, it's a lot of it was local films, uh, you know, so we really tried to reward the local filmmaking community. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, kids of all ages made uh, very good films, and then they had an opportunity to walk a red carpet and have their films screened, and we even gave out some awards. So it was a very, you know, nice experience for everyone. And it was judged, actually, by high schoolers. So we have a program called Junior Jury where high schoolers watch some of the films and kind of offer their opinions and learn about film criticism and things like that. Superb. So, That's yeah. a wonderful experience. And you never know when that moment on the red carpet and being treated like young filmmakers as opposed to kids or just students or something like that, young filmmakers, it could change a life. It could change a course of a vocational future. That's right, you know, and especially by being affiliated with such a great festival, Sarasota Film Festival, which is, you know, well known in the festival world, I think it's a great opportunity for these local young filmmakers to have a film screen here, and then, you know, they have it on their resume, it, it helps them get into our fest festival, so it really is a, you know, boost already. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, another thing that we're doing that's a great uh, kind of boost local community this year is a 20-hour film contest. Right. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a new event where filmmakers get 20 hours to film and 20 hours to edit a short five-minute film. And we give them, they pick a theme, but we give them a chosen element. In this case, uh, it was a prop, a sunblock. So we had uh, 18 teams competing. We have 12 films to show uh, this coming Sunday uh, at the 10 a.m. Uh, on the 22nd, and you know we'll have an award ceremony following that. So uh, you know it's a, it's a it's a lot of excitement for the filmmakers to make these films. And, and for 12 teams out of 18 to make it to the finish line and give you something finished, that's a pretty high percentage. Right. That's pretty great. Yeah. That's about three quarters of it all. So. Yeah, and, and there's always it's, 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 there's a lot of challenges to make a film in such a short period of time. So something always goes wrong. So this is, I think, a pretty good amount of films that <laughs> get finished. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know, we have other programs as well throughout the year that we are planning to do. Um, you know, one thing is coming up is film camps. Actually, we're we're going to have uh, film camps this year for the first time, whereas you know, local students will learn, have an opportunity to learn how to make a short film over the summer. So we're hoping. Uh, you know, this will be a great uh, addition to the community as well. So if, uh, if anyone's interested, film camps at sarasotafilmfestival.com, you know, they can get more information. That's awesome. Right. And uh, now, Petra, do you see a challenge having to go out and market all of this, get the word out? have to not really um i am experienced in this uh, we're running uh, such type of competition in, in prague for for, for years uh, and uh, this is just such a nice thing to do for uh, for young people to give them such opportunity that that people people just open have, welcome it with open arms really like it's 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 a good idea people like it people like to be involved in this right. so. i saw the teams uh, opening night i saw them all come out on stage and two of them were children young young right. young people i would say right. under 13 probably they look to be and then some of them were adults and some of them were veterans and mm -hmm. women and men it was pretty exciting was whose brainchild Aaron who who thought this up that was a, originally a, a sort of a, a like as you said a brainchild between Mark Famiglia the, pr the board president and I uh, really based on when Petra and Paul joined our team um, and their experience in putting events like you know, similar veins like this together. We really wanted to celebrate the 20th anniversary by sort of marking this as the the 20 hour film contest. And so we knew that um, overall 20 hours was a uh, far too uh, few hours to be able to pull this off. So we decided <laughs> to at least, you know, be able to parcel it out by, you know, you get 20 hours to film and 20 hours to edit. So at least it was, uh, you know, uh, executable by the teams. But and much, much more fair. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're going to have to take a quick break, but I'm, I'm loving to hear all this. It's great and, and it's very inventive and taking a lot of innovative steps for you. So stay with us. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> If you'd like to start a career in automotive body repair, our Automotive Collision and Repair Program covers a large array of the basic, necessary skills you need. You will work hands-on as you learn sheet metal repair skills, 
frame and unibody squaring and aligning, the use of fillers, paint systems, and undercoats, related welding skills, glass services, and other miscellaneous repairs. Automotive Collision and Repair focuses on a broad, transferable skills that will prepare you for employment in the industry. Welcome back to Sunco Spotlight. We are talking to three amazing people from the 20th anniversary of the Sarasota Film Festival in 2018 here, and Aaron Murphy and Paul and Petra Radner, uh, husband and wife, teamed up to do new and exciting things with education and marketing, and Aaron, of course, as the uh, assistant festival director. The 20-hour film festival we were talking about before we went to break, it's actually 20 in and 20 out, 20 to make it, 20 to post it. And 12 teams out of 18 are made it to the finish line. What's next? Where do you go from here? Uh, well, as far as other things that we were planning, uh, definitely we have a lot of classroom content that we're hoping to bring in. You know, it's already kind of the end of the year, of course, but sure. in, in the summer we have a film camps, but uh, we have something called Classroom Critic where we're going to be bringing in a new uh, programming to children, you know, in their classrooms. So, uh, specifically, I, I'm tailoring the, a new course that, that is designed around teaching kids film language and film terminology and kind of, you know, things like montage and, you know, giving them basic skills, uh, you know, a, around film and understanding film. So, this is something that we will have uh, in partnership with a number of schools throughout the year. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that we're planning is actually we've been discussing uh, creating a cinema tech. Uh, like a, a program of classic films that we can show throughout the year. So this is this idea so far has received some uh, uh, ex excitement. So we're hoping to institute that and talking to partners to make that happen. Well, there's a whole generation. Oh, always. There's always a new generation that doesn't even know some of the old classic films. And sometimes the old classic films aren't that old. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. of them are just you know 10 or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. But if kids are 10 to 15 years old. It was before their time. So, um, Aaron, how does the festival see their year-long involvement with the community? Yes, I think the biggest uh, incorporation of, of the festival into the community really is centrally through the educational programs because you know, right now I think the city is changing a lot in its demographics, which is wonderful. Traditionally, we're, I mean, we're known ar around uh, the, the world as a wonderful tourist destination, which of course has a, a, a sort of a season of the year where that is really uh, more prevalent than others. But I think through this program, as well as you know, uh, supplementing our Moonlight movie series that we do year-round outside at all of our beaches and parks around Sarasota County. Which is free? Yes, it Completely is free to free. the public, mm -hmm. and that is one thing that we're very proud of, and, and, and it's so nice to hear the community response when we do our screenings in that uh, in that method. But I th supplementing it with uh, the, the program that Paul is developing right now with the classic films will be another way that we can increase that. And uh, our other goal is to be integrating more local original uh, music when it comes to pairing those with some of these screenings as we start to roll them out in the fall. That's a great addition. We have a lot of really gifted musical individuals and groups in the city. We do. And, and then it's going to fall to Petra to get the word out. Yes. To get it marketed. Yes. And do you have any special plans or is there a, a number or an email where people can reach out to you as the marketing arm and say, have I got an idea for you, or I'd like to pitch myself, or how do we help? Yes, please reach out to me on uh, Petra at sarasotafilmfestival.com. That's pretty that's easy. That's the best email, yes, that's <laughs> the best email, and I'm happy to hear any suggestions. I'm happy to get, get people connected, get businesses connected, mm -hmm. and just in general, um, bring this out there. Right, and I can vouch for that. Petra and I spoke back some months ago when I got back from Sundance, and we were sharing information about the films that I'd seen there, and we talked about local films and local producers that were involved in different indie projects projects and so forth and you're you're always looking for input and information from the community yes. right yes of course and yeah. i'm sure paul and aaron both are as well absolutely mm -hmm. of course absolutely. so would it be it would be petra at sarasotafilmfestival.com paul uh, well education at sarasota film education festival. at sarasota right. film festival yes Aaron at sarasotafilmfestival.com? Yes. yes, and you can also send an email to info at sarasotafilmfestival.com if you're unsure of, of who the, the right recipient might be, and then we can route it for you. Okay, and what are the dates of the film camps? Because that was something that you know, may really strike a chord with people in the summer when the kids are out of school and they're looking for something right. creative and valuable to do. What are the, do you have dates yet, or is that uh, still well, forming? It's, it's, um, right now we're planning it for June and a part of July, mm -hmm. so probably six weeks uh, from early June to part of July. But we will have uh, more information available. That's why we're 
uh, hoping people can register already by writing to film camps and we will send them the program and what we're planning to do. So film camps at sarasotafilmfestival.com. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. And the Moonlight Movies, is there a schedule that goes up year round about that and do they just go to sarasotafilmfestival.com? And... Yes, we have, we have a special tab. It's, uh, I believe it's community uh, on our uh, sarasotafilmfestival.com website. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently we have a, a showing of uh, Turtles April 8th, 28th at uh, Lido Beach and then we'll be rolling out the rest of the program uh, after the film festival settles down. Great. After the 22nd. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see clips and things online as well of some of the highlights of the film festival, some of the things that went on. There'll be some video put up and people Absolutely. that maybe couldn't see everything they wanted to see, mm -hmm. they can have a little glimpse of the speakers and the special interviews and things like that. Yes, and I would really most, as the most up-to-date and minute-to-minute -minute source for all of that is our social media account, so you know, facebook.com slash mysff for Facebook. That would probably be the most comprehensive source and you know, we, as soon as uh, you know, John Heder, say, hit the red carpet for his world premiere of when Jeff tried to save the world, we had photos up you know, just momentarily after that was done. So it's a really nice way to stay uh, current, uh, kind of moment to moment as to what's happening this year. That's fabulous. Well, I'm sorry we don't have more time. What you have to say is so enjoyable and so informative and so good for our community. So thank you three for being here. Thank you all for watching. And you've been watching Suncoast Spotlight. We'll see you next time.